For more than 70 years, the United States Air Force has played a pivotal role in maintaining global military power and deterrence. In conflicts ranging from the Cold War to Desert Storm and through the challenges of more recent decades, US bombers have projected American resolve and deterrence around the globe. Today, as global tensions shift and the risks of conflict with near-peer competitors intensify, the nature of deterrence is adapting to a world shaped by technological competition and renewed great power rivalry. Increasingly, the task of maintaining strategic stability and credible deterrence faces unprecedented challenges, especially as potential adversaries demonstrate rapid advancement in both technology and military doctrine. At the center of this new landscape stands the B-21 Raider, an aircraft developed to meet the demands of modern warfare through stealth digital architecture and flexible mission capability. The B-21 is the first new American stealth bomber in decades, envisioned as a primary tool to ensure the United States can meet future threats and remain credible in its commitments. The debate over the future of the US bomber force is no longer confined to budget lines or abstract assessments of deterrence. Now, it has become a public issue and a point of congressional action, with lawmakers directly supporting not just B-21 procurement, but also the means to accelerate and expand production. Recently, a significant shift emerged. With a new $4.5 billion surge from the House's reconciliation bill explicitly aimed at speeding up B-21 production and enabling an inventory exceeding 100 aircraft, the Air Force and Congress have signaled the urgency of expanding capacity. Notably, this includes a call for a second production facility, deemed essential to meet rising requirements. This marks a pivotal moment reflecting how deeply global challenges and the U.S. response are now being shaped by the twin imperatives of technological innovation and timely fielding of capability. Why is the Air Force emphasizing not just the long-established goal of 100 bombers, but pressing to double the production rate? What strategic, technological, and political calculations drive the sense of urgency? Understanding the factors at play reveals as much about global security as it does about the future of American air power. A new era, an old problem. The call to accelerate and expand B-21 production is rooted in the evolving realities of American military strategy and force structure. The B-21 Raider is designed to do what no legacy fleet can accomplish at scale, penetrate advanced air defenses, execute both nuclear and conventional strategic missions, and return undetected. These features have always mattered, but changes in the threat environment have made these capabilities indispensable. The origins of the B-21 stretch back almost 15 years, a period characterized by shifting budget priorities and intense debate over the appropriate size of the Air Force's bomber fleet. Earlier uncertainty about the number of B-21 Raiders needed, often driven by budget pressures, resulted in projections that risked prolonging the operation of legacy bombers, such as the B-52, B-1B Lancer, and B-2 Spirit. While these aircraft have each played vital roles, their maintenance and modernization are challenged by their increasing age, growing costs, and obsolescence in the face of rapidly modernizing adversarial capabilities. Each legacy platform, although iconic in its own right, is a product of a particular era. The B-52, introduced before the Apollo moon landing, has shown longevity but cannot escape the limitations of aging design and outdated survivability profiles. The B-1B Lancer and B-2 Spirit, both developed during the Cold War for different strategic purposes, similarly face growing operational and sustainability challenges as maintenance burdens increase and the threats of electronic warfare and integrated air defenses evolve. Recognizing these realities and the risks that come from relying on older bombers, the Air Force originally set a provisional requirement for at least 100 B-21s. However, as the program progressed and adversaries made tangible gains in their own force modernization, military leaders began to argue for expanding the fleet further, potentially to as many as 145 bombers. This upward revision reflects a reassessment of worldwide security conditions and the practical limitations of the existing bomber inventory. China's steady modernizing effort is particularly instructive. Reports about the Xi'an H-20, a Chinese stealth bomber under development, 
suggest it could pose a credible threat to U.S. interests and allies in the Pacific. Meanwhile, Russia's investment in modernizing the Tu-160 fleet and deploying advanced air and missile defense systems, like the S-500 and S-550, indicates a persistent effort to counter Western capabilities. These developments have reinforced the urgency behind maintaining not just a qualitative, but also a quantitative advantage. Conversely, the production of advanced bombers is a laborious endeavor. Delays and bottlenecks can leave the force at risk, particularly as older bombers near retirement or become less reliable. As defense planners weigh potential capability gaps against emerging threats, the imperative is clear. Act now to shore up the bomber fleet before adversaries can erode the U.S. margin of technological and operational superiority. The recent $4.5 billion provided by Congress is therefore a recognition of the changed environment. It signals a shift from slow and steady procurement to urgent capacity-driven acquisition. No longer is the B-21 simply an acquisition project, it is now a critical element in addressing near-term strategy, both to retire aging bombers and to meet the demands of a world where military surprises are a very real risk. Don't forget to subscribe for more in-depth analysis on US air power modernization, defense strategy, and the technologies shaping 21st century deterrence. Now let's move on. The requirement for numbers, strategic imperatives. Bomber force planning is not just a question of technical performance, but also of quantity and operational flexibility. The size of the B-21 fleet is central to U.S. ability to deliver persistent, credible global reach, not only today, but through the 2030s and well beyond. The Air Force maintains that at least 100 B-21s are necessary to ensure credible, strategic and conventional deterrence. Current plans anticipate a full-rate production pace of about 10 bombers per year, with two pre-production B-21s having been built and a second expected to fly soon, momentum is building. Still, at existing rates and with only a single production line, even reaching the minimum requirement by the mid to late 2030s remains an ambitious target. The developing global security environment is unlikely to allow for such extended timelines. China and Russia are advancing not just their bomber forces, but also missile arsenals air defense networks, and electronic warfare tools. Each year of delay potentially reduces the effectiveness of the U.S. bomber force, especially as strategic competitors' field capabilities designed specifically to blunt traditional advantages in stealth, range, and payload. Moreover, the original figure of 100 bombers, set amid different geopolitical assumptions, did not fully account for adversary improvements or for possible attrition during future conflict. Senior Air Force leaders have publicly stated that numbers set a decade ago may no longer reflect the operational demands of a potential multi-theater crisis or the risks posed by older platforms phasing out. Thus, the call for increasing the planned buy to as many as 145 Raiders is a response not just to capacity planning, but to real-world risks of unplanned losses sustained conflicts, and the complexity of operating across multiple regions simultaneously. Operational experience confirms that a finite number of bombers risks forcing the military into uncomfortable trade-offs, stretching resources, slowing response times, and weakening both deterrence and actual combat effectiveness. If the US were to operate with a minimalist fleet, attrition from accidents, mechanical failures, or combat could quickly strain the ability to project power globally. Thus, the increasing focus is not simply on acquiring aircraft, but on doing so fast enough to maintain both technological and numerical advantages. Production bottlenecks and the need for expansion. Building a platform as advanced as the B-21 is a complex, multi-year project. The Air Force's current production strategy anticipates approximately 10 aircraft per year, sufficient to reach a 100 bomber fleet only after a decade or more, assuming no unforeseen setbacks. Here, the Air Force faces the industrial challenge of moving from small-scale, highly secure assembly to higher rate, more robust production. The $4.5 billion funding injection is expressly targeted at solving this bottleneck. Rather than simply purchasing additional aircraft, it is about standing up a second production facility 
to ensure that both current requirements and any future increases can be met without years of additional delay. The single facility model cannot provide the resilience or surge capacity required to replace retiring bombers, respond to changing threats, or adjust for unexpected setbacks in acquisition. The goal, then, is not redundancy, but resilience. With two facilities, the Air Force can hedge against potential production risks, keep up with revised fleet size targets, and ensure that steady progress is made even if challenges arise at one site. Every aspect of B-21 production involves unique requirements. Radar absorbent materials, advanced flight hardware, sensitive avionics, and a workforce that must operate under strict security protocols. The supply chain spans hundreds of subcontractors, each contributing specialized components. Any disruption, whether in material sourcing, component manufacturing, or final assembly, can reverberate throughout the entire program. Getting a second line operational is not immediate. Establishing and certifying a new site, training technical personnel, and integrating it into the existing security and quality control apparatus will take years. But doing so is necessary if the Air Force hopes to stay ahead of the curve as adversaries continue to close technological and operational gaps. The strategic value of the B-21 in deterrence the B-21 radar stands at a critical juncture for U.S. air power and deterrence. Its significance lies both in its technical capabilities and in the numbers required to guarantee they matter in practice. Designed to penetrate advanced air defenses and execute its missions even against strengthened adversary systems, the B-21 is planned to deliver both nuclear and conventional payloads. This dual-capable role is indispensable to U.S. deterrent strategy particularly as adversaries develop capabilities that could threaten forward bases, allied infrastructure, or regional stability. Digital engineering, central to the B-21's architecture, underpins the Air Force's hope that future upgrades can be performed efficiently, both hardware and software, enabling the radar to adapt as new threats and technologies emerge. An open systems design makes regular refreshes practical, allowing the aircraft to keep pace with developments such as electronic warfare, cyber threats, and network-centric weapons. But capability alone, without sufficient operational mass, can invite risk. A fleet that is too small, slowly produced, or overly reliant on legacy systems, could undermine deterrence. Adversaries pay close attention to both the size and condition of the U.S. bomber force. A limited or overstretched fleet may embolden risk-taking, or decrease Allied confidence in America's guarantees. Furthermore, strategic presence depends not just on the quality of aircraft, but on their number and readiness. The ability to surge bombers, conduct visible exercises and deployments, and maintain constant patrols factors heavily into both deterrence and reassurance missions. In this respect, scaling up B-21 production is a direct response to current and anticipated challenges across all theaters, budgetary realities, and congressional action. The House's recent appropriation of $4.5 billion represents more than a routine budget increase. It is a policy shift, prioritizing not just procurement, but also production infrastructure. For the first time in this program, Congress is directly funding efforts to expand industrial capacity, reflecting bipartisan concern about the pace of bomber retirement and the risk of falling behind both adversaries and the requirements of U.S. military strategy. This investment comes despite the immense cost. In 2022, the Air Force estimated development, purchase, and operation of a fleet of at least 100 B-21 Raiders would cost around $203 billion through the life cycle. Appropriators thus face the challenge of balancing budgetary prudence against operational necessity. Attention sharpened by the rising costs of maintaining aging aircraft and by the need to recapitalize essential elements of the U.S. nuclear triad and conventional strike capabilities. In practice, this funding acts as both a signal and a safeguard. A signal to adversaries that U.S. resolve and industrial capacity remain strong and a safeguard against near-term capability gaps as older bombers are ultimately retired. Congress's decision is informed not only by Air Force advocacy, 
but also by a security environment where delaying modernization could court unacceptable risk. Risks and challenges in scaling up. Scaling up B21 production entails risks that extend well beyond the technicalities of assembly. Every Raider is a high technology product demanding meticulous oversight, deep supplier networks, and rigorous quality control. Speeding up the process without sacrificing standards is a central challenge. Establishing a new production facility involves long lead times. Each aspect, from construction to workforce vetting to supply chain security, must be approached with discipline and caution. The B-21's reliance on sensitive components, some made from rare materials or manufactured in small quantities, means that any supply chain disruption can threaten delivery schedules. Moreover, the secure digital environment needed to design, upgrade, and produce the radar adds layers of complexity, requiring not just cybersecurity protocols, but also a workforce familiar with tightly integrated digital engineering practices. This necessitates both investment in personnel and continuity of expertise over the life of the program. The broader economic and industrial context also shapes the program's prospects. Key raw materials, such as special alloys or radar-absorbing elements, may face sourcing pressures in an era of global uncertainty. Both government and industry must work to ensure that supply lines remain robust, resilient, and protected against both economic and geopolitical disruption. However, perhaps the most critical risk is inertia. Delays in committing to expanded production capacity could leave the US trailing its strategic requirements, especially as the timeline for retiring B-1Bs and B-2s draws nearer, ensuring the timely fielding of a sufficiently large B-21 force is essential if the Air Force is to meet both current and emerging demands. The road ahead for US bomber modernization. The decision to expand and accelerate B-21 production is the result of years of assessment, ongoing analysis of global risks, and evolving technological requirements. As new pre-production raiders move toward their first flights and preparations for increased manufacturing capacity proceed, the strategic rationale for larger and faster procurement is clear. Ensuring the Air Force has a robust, flexible bomber force well into the 2030s and beyond will rely on more than dollars or technology alone. It will require the integration of lessons learned from past programs, clear-eyed assessments of both threats and opportunities, and sustained commitment from both military leadership and Congress. In the coming years, the pace and scale of B-21 production will serve as both a test and an indicator. A test of America's ability to adapt to changing circumstances, and an indicator of how seriously it regards the future of global security and deterrence. Allies will watch to gauge the credibility of US commitments. Adversaries will measure both progress and intent. Conclusion renewing American air power. Nearly 15 years after the B-21 program's inception, the campaign to double production is less about numbers alone and more about what those numbers signify. A commitment to maintaining credible deterrence, adapting to new challenges, and providing the United States with the tools necessary to respond to evolving threats. For the Air Force, the B-21 represents a new chapter a platform designed to overcome next-generation defenses, deploy both nuclear and conventional payloads, and minimize the risks associated with legacy aircraft. Congressional investment in both the aircraft and the facilities to build them at scale is an affirmation of the stakes involved. The choice to expand and accelerate B-21 production is not a speculative gambit, but a reasoned response to a rapidly changing world. As the radar moves closer to operational service, and as second-line production takes shape, the program will remain central to defense policy and the broader challenge of sustaining American security. In the final calculus, strategic deterrence depends not only on technological edge, but on the presence, readiness, and flexibility of the forces that underpin it. Through increased investment, capacity, and resolve, the United States is making clear its intention to ensure air power remains both credible and effective, not just for today, but for the decades ahead. The immediate future of American air power and the broader contours of US security 
will depend in part on whether the B-21 program continues on this accelerated path. With a new infusion of funding and clear direction from Congress and military leaders, the foundations are being laid, not just for more bombers, but for the resilience and adaptability that have long defined American air power on the world stage.